Hello everybody, I wanna welcome you back to the YouTube channel and I wanna welcome you back to a very special episode dedicated to the cotton industry in the province of Xinjiang, China. Now, Xinjiang has been a hot topic over the past few years, and if any of you have been watching the current situations in China, there has been a huge backlash against many multinational companies. Most notably, H&M, Nike, and Adidas have all been caught as Chinese consumers are beginning to boycott these bands in protest to the accusations that there is forced labor inside the cotton industry in the province of Xinjiang. Many Chinese celebrities are voluntarily canceling their lucrative endorsement contracts with these companies and this is really a very important issue that we must discuss. In addition to that, I also would like to share with you my thoughts from a cultural perspective, both from the Western perspective and the Chinese perspective on why this issue is so important. And most importantly, I'm also going to be sharing with you what I think these companies are going to be doing in the future as they continue to operate in China. This is going to be an action-packed episode as always. Let's get started. Now everybody, I wanna introduce you to the John Deere CP690. It is the world's most advanced cotton harvesting machine, and it packs cotton into two ton bales while harvesting and can harvest four hectare acres of cotton in a single hour. Make no doubt about it, John Deere, the classic American company, is dominating the cotton harvesting industry, and it has also been rewarding its shareholders. Take a look at this graph highlighting John Deere stock performance over the past five years. John Deere stock up 363%. Now there are many reasons that John Deere stock is performing so well, is that it has a very large global footprint. For example, in Asia, one of its most important markets is of course the country of China, where it maintains no less than six regional offices. And here's the interesting thing. One of its most important markets with inside the country of China is the province of Xinjiang, where the majority of their cotton harvesting machine sales are actually made. This is something that not many people are talking about. However, it's a relevant point that I'd like to bring up. Now, in doing my research for today's video, I stumbled across a recent article from the South China Morning Post. It's entitled, U.S. Farm Brand John Deere at the Forefront of Surging Cotton Machinery Sales to Xinjiang as Human Rights Sanctions Loom. The article goes on to state that sales of U.S. manufactured cotton harvesting machinery to China have increased by 4,000%. The main reason for the dramatic increase? is the possible threat of U.S. sanctions against China, which might make it impossible to import high-tech goods. Now, when this article was written, it was written during a time when Donald Trump was president and there was currently a very large battle, a trade war going on between the United States and China. Now, Xinjiang is very unique because one-fifth of the world's cotton comes directly from this Chinese province. And the cotton industry in China was doing everything they could in their power to make sure that they had access to this American technology. As we see here, the manager of a government-owned John Deere showroom says the U.S. company's cotton-picking vehicles are impeccable and super efficient. Now, at this point, I'd like to introduce you to another YouTube channel. This is called Annie Guli, and Annie is a Chinese vlogger that is based in the province of Xinjiang. She is actually of Uyghur descent, and she typically does a lot of daily vlog videos. Now, this is a video that Annie posted on her channel over two years ago. Again, long before any of this became a very heated debate. And you can see from this video that Annie takes us to the fields to examine the cotton. She interviews some local farmers that are working within the cotton industry. And of course, she concludes the video by showing us how these John Deere tractors are working in the fields to harvest the cotton. Now, according to Chinese government estimates, up to 70% of all cotton that is harvested in the province of Xinjiang is done so with the use of these mechanical machines. So I'm not going to say that there is no chance that there are any humans actually working these fields. Of course, there are many people employed within this industry in Xinjiang. And again, this is a very important issue, not only for the Chinese community, but also the international world. Obviously, all of us want to source our cotton and buy our shirts, our clothing from ethical and reliable sources. So I think this is something that we really need to start examining from a cultural aspect. Over one year ago, H&M decided to come out and make a statement that they believe that there could be possible forced labor in the fields in Xinjiang. 
Now, this is a very big accusation. And if a foreign company that's doing business in China is going to make this accusation, they better be 100% sure that their statements are completely accurate. But I want to give you an example of how other Western companies will typically respond to an accusation like this. For example, earlier this year, the social media network Twitter decided to ban Donald Trump from its social network. But here's the amazing thing. Within 24 hours of Trump's removal from Twitter, basically every other social media platform came out and did the exact same thing. From a Western perspective, we do not want our companies to be associated with anything that could potentially give us a bad reputation. And I think this is what you saw happen inside the cotton industry in Xinjiang. H&M came out and decided to make a statement. They said, we believe that there could be potential violations of human rights and forced labor. Now, Nike, Adidas, other foreign companies, immediately alarm bells are going off. They're saying to themselves, well, we don't want to be associated with that. We're going to go ahead and follow the lead. And this is what happened in the situation because this is what happens in Western culture. Again, you act very swiftly and very quickly just to make sure that your reputation is not ruined. However, let's look at this from a Chinese cultural perspective. Chinese consumers won't pay for multinational companies' political correctness that caters to the West. The article goes on to state that the ideological conflict between China and the West will be a long time struggle. The West has various methods to discredit the Chinese government, but it lacks tactics to deal with Chinese public opinion. This is an important point that I do want to discuss, and this is Chinese public opinion. For example, if you are a foreign company that comes into China and you make accusations against China, you must be 100% sure that these accusations are true and verified. And I don't believe that this is what these companies have done. Again, from a Western perspective, if there is even a rumor that there is a potential for forced labor, most Western countries are simply going to you know, agree with that. They're going to agree with that because they don't want to lose their reputation. However, it's really important to understand in China, you cannot be doing business in China and be just be throwing out false accusations. Again, you must do your research. Interesting enough, I was able to find a US company that has done their research in regards to this issue. This is the US footwear brand Skechers, who has publicly stated that they have found no evidence of Xinjiang forced labor. Skechers went out and hired independent auditors to come and have announced and unannounced visits to their factories. Skechers employs many Uyghur employees inside their factories and they want to make sure that not only their employees and the factories but also the materials that they source are all sourced in an ethical manner. Again, forced labor is a very serious accusation. No company is going to want to endorse that or use that. It is very important that this cotton is sourced ethically. However, it's really important for these companies to do their due diligence and to act exactly like Skechers has done. Now, some Westerners have actually criticized Chinese social media for being the responsibility of this large boycott. For example, the statement that H&M made about forced labor is over 12 months old. This is not a recent statement that they made. However, it was available on social media. It was publicly posted on their website. And again, even though it was made in the past, doesn't mean that it is not relevant for the future. And this is something that we often see in Western media as well. Let me give you an example of American comedian Kevin Hart. A few years ago, he was given the chance to be the host of the Oscars. Obviously, a tremendous honor for his career. However, just before he was getting ready to host, somebody found some homophobic tweets that he sent out many years prior. Immediately, the Oscars came out and canceled Kevin Hart. This is something that is not only happening in China, but in America and around the world. Now, in conclusion, I hope everybody can see how important it is to understand the cultural elements of this discussion and why doing a business in China is really so difficult and why you truly need good consultants and good experts to advise you on how to operate inside the country of China. China remains one of the most incredible markets in the world and Chinese consumers love international brands. But there must be mutual respect. Foreign companies cannot come into the country of China, want to benefit from the market, and then also accuse China of doing things that are not true. If there is truth into this, there must be clear evidence for these reasons. That is the important cultural element that people must understand. 
Now, everybody, I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video on YouTube. I hope you found it educational, and I do believe there is a brighter road ahead for these international brands. For example, take a look at this article from the SCMP, which highlights that the Chinese boycott against Nike and Adidas appears to be losing steam as the two international sportswear brands remain visible on major e-commerce sites and a special Nike offer recently sold out with just in a few hours. Again, there's an exciting time for China in the future. Beijing is hosting the 2022 Winter Olympics. Nike, Adidas, many of these brands will be front and center as they work with Chinese athletes to bring in one of the most special events of the, you know, of the world, the Olympics. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Comment down below, let me know what you thought, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.